Hello, everyone. I'm Katie Lindner, facilitator for today's Cisco Knowledge Network session. In a moment, I will turn the session over to our host, John Malzahn. But before doing so, I have a few housekeeping notes to cover. Should you have any questions throughout this session, please ask them in the Q&A panel, and our panelists and speakers will reply as quickly as possible. For any technical WebEx issues you have, please enter them in the chat panel. This session is being recorded, and you will receive an email with a link to both the recording and the presentation later this week. Also, please take a moment to fill out the survey, which will pop up when the session is closed. Your feedback is always very important to us. With that, let's get started. John, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie, and welcome everyone to our power, I guess our, our CCAN session this morning on orchestration and network management. I'm John Malzahn in Lead Virtualization Solution Marketing here at Cisco Systems. We've got a great session here that we're excited to present to you this morning. As uh, most of you are aware, automation and orchestration can bring significant benefits to service providers who are seeking to reduce their costs and improve revenues. Today, we're gonna to be taking a deeper dive on a topic considered to be one of the four key pillars of orchestration, model-driven automated assurance, uh, and covering off a, a little more of a specific deep dive use case around that. Um, service providers uh, aiming to deliver network services faster and uh, are, are aiming to deliver network services faster with assured quality. But uh, as uh, their networks become increasingly software-defined and programmable, the, the rate of the change is also rising. Uh, which is driven by network on-demand offering self-service portals. So in this dynamic environment, uh, traditional test and assurance solutions just can't keep up. And if they can, they often tend to bring unacceptable consequences and operating cost. So these traditional hardware-bound solutions uh, can, can also hobble an SP's agility to uh, in, in, to innovate, uh, which in today's environment uh, is, is really crucial to their staying competitive. So the concept we're going to be discussing today, model-driven or orchestrated assurance, offers a, a, a new approach to bridging this gap between service fulfillment and assurance. To uh, better address this need, we've recently added Cisco orchestrated assurance powered by NetRounds to our Cisco's network automation offering. And we're excited to share more about this with you today. Uh, NetRounds, if, uh, if you've not already heard of them, is a leading provider of active programmable test and service monitoring solutions for uh, the communication service provider market. Uh, NetRounds is also uh, a member of the Cisco Solutions Plus program. That means that uh, if you're a service provider, you can approach Cisco or any of our approved partners to purchase NetRounds as a validated integrated solution in addition to uh, the, the Cisco's network services orchestrator offering. So in, uh, in today's webinar, we're gonna focus on uh, so we're, we're, going to, we're going to focus on the, the proven integration but between uh, NSO and uh, NetRounds Orchestrated Assurance, uh, two market leading offers, and show you how they can enable you to uh, introduce automated assurance into your networks with, with confidence and ease. Uh, we're going to cover off uh, some real life use cases involving uh, assuring and troubleshooting VPNs in today's session, a little bit sort of a deep dive on the topic. And uh, we'll address uh, some of the customer challenges, uh, how, how to deploy this, and uh, we'll uh, additionally sort of uh, share a live demo of the solution in action. So we're, we're, with that, I'd like to maybe introduce our, uh, some of our speakers. We're uh, joined today by three great orchestration automation experts from both Cisco and NetRounds. Our first speaker today will be Song To. Song is a senior manager leading the uh, product management team for uh, Cisco's cloud platform solutions uh, group here at Cisco uh, over Cisco NSO and uh, our Cisco Orchestrated Assurance offer uh, that you're going to hear more about in today's session. Following song, you'll, you'll hear from two additional uh, leading experts uh, on the topic uh, from NetRounds, uh, starting with Matt Nordwan, who is CEO and co-founder of, uh, of NetRounds, along with Dr. Stefan Vallen, who's a director of, of product strategy with NetRounds. Uh, you might might also be familiar if you've uh, listened to some of our CKNs in the past. Uh, uh, Stefan uh, is is dubbed one of the original Cisco NSO architects. Uh, you know, he previously was with Cisco uh, as a principal engineer, uh, working on on NSO strategy following uh, Cisco's acquisition of TLF back in 2014. So Matt and Stefan are both here to share their deep experience on uh, the orchestrated assurance topic. And uh, they're going to show you how combining NetRounds with NSO uh, can help 
you manage and assure services through the entire life cycle in a completely automated way. So we'll, we'll end the session today with a uh, brief Q&A, but uh, we would also uh, invite you to pose questions into the, into the chat window off to the lower right-hand side of the screen, and uh, we'll try to get those answered for you in real time as well. And uh, with that, I'd like to turn the discussion over to Song, who will kick us off. Thank you, John. Hi, everyone. My name is Song, and today I'll spend a few minutes to give everyone an overview of a refresher of Cisco NSO Network Services Orchestrator our industry-leading automation and orchestration platform. And after that, we'll transition over to NetRounds and Orchestrated Assurance presented by Matt and Dr. Stefan Valen. Key market trend observation, right? In today's market, we're seeing really the customers' behaviors changing and coming with new expectations. They're looking for speed. They're looking to enter new markets faster. They're, they're looking for their service providers to be able to give them the service much quicker than in the past, as fast as at a click of a button. And with that, it certainly has imposed, started imposing different requirements on the way service delivery is done. From there, there's additional changes around the business model. New technologies such as virtualization and programmable networks are changing the way customer does, customers do business. And certainly, within the service provider environment, you're looking at over-the-top players, which you can cooperate in one week and be a competitor the next week. That means your infrastructure needs to be exposed in a way that can be integrated and change in a relatively quick time as business need changes. Right? All of these then support a central requirement, the ability to execute at the speed of software. And in order to deliver this kind of agility, you need capabilities such as network programmability, NFV, and SDN. Right? And then how do you deliver those? You need automation. Flexible automation that is able to simplify how you do things and standardize how you do things, rather than a lengthy error-prone manual process and custom OSS coding in order to just create, change, or tear down network services. And all of that really our experience that we got from introducing and also delivering NSO to the market and helping our customer um, get into the current uh, state of delivering the business. And from there, we believe we came up with this white paper that really talked to the four pillars of orchestration. In order to automate and orchestrate today's network services environment, uh, you need to look for these four capability, which we have published as a white paper on Cisco.com. Right? Orchestration needs to be able to work across multiple domains. Faithful convergence, number two here, it covers how we need to move from complex service interdependencies and hard coding in scripts to declarative and automated, repeatable, reliable orchestration, which Cisco NSO delivers. And then orchestrated assurance, which we'll spend majority of our time today talking to why we need it and how it changes how services are delivered, and data models and data model mapping. And orchestrated assurance, with orchestration and automation taking prominence in the market and in how you deliver service, it becomes much more obvious that assurance, traditional assurance, become an odd man out. It requires a seismic shift in how we actually assure and test the service once it's delivered or once it's changed. We cannot afford to separate delivery and assurance in separate silo anymore. Right. And let's get 
take a look at how NSO does orchestration and automation. Right? It offers the model-driven end-to-end service lifecycle uh, orchestration system. It can seamlessly integrate to OSS, BSS, or even just a developer in, provides a developer interface or engineering interface to an operator. It supports and en enables our service provider customers to build a loosely coupled and modular architecture, leveraging our open APIs and standard protocols, rather than having hard-coded scripts that uh, is not easy to change after implementation. And last but not least, NSO orchestrates across multiple domains and multiple layers to provide a centralized policy and service orchestration framework across the entire network. We've recently completed a research study of how automation and orchestration has been able to offer and deliver to our major service provider customers in terms of operational efficiency. Right? The numbers are staggering. Before the automation is implemented, the process of time-consuming manual provisioning processes and taking days to weeks to implement new services, as well as poor visibility of what's actually implemented on the network, to the time when full automation is implemented, even on individual services, delivering much simpler processes, high level of efficiency, up to 60 to 70 percent of uh, time efficiencies and uh, OPEX avoidance. Over five years, we're seeing ROIs of almost 400% and tens of millions of dollars in tier three to five providers and in larger tier one, two providers with much larger volumes, the savings could be as high as $70 million. These are significant savings that we believe is very compelling for those who are embarking on an automation journey to not only look for doing automation, getting it as comprehensive as possible, but also looking at the right tools to implement your network service orchestration and automation. With that, um, we're going to pop up a poll question and hope everyone's get a chance to uh, respond to this question. When does your co company plan to have automation and orchestration deployed in your organization? A, already completed the project. B, by the end of 2018, C, by the end of 2020, and D, still determining the ROI of the solutions and have not made plans yet. While you're looking at answering this question, which we'll you know, share the answers in a few moments, I think we're ready to hand over to uh, Matt. We'll be talking to the next section of uh, Troubleshooting Business VPNs with uh, Cisco Orchestrator Assurance, powered by NetRound. Matt? Thank you so much, Song. Uh, my name is Matt Nordland. I'm one of the two founders of, of NetRounds. I'm also acting as a CEO. Uh, NetRounds is a software-based company working out of Sweden, being a Cisco Solutions Plus partner since uh, mid this year. So I will take you through a couple of slides where I will give you the uh, motivation why it's so important to bother about active test and assurance. And I will also exemplify this in two real world use cases that we have been engaged with. Uh, and I will also give you an overview of the NetRounds system as a whole, uh, which will uh, also be very useful when we do the demo session later in this, uh, during this uh, presentation. So, uh, Starting off with why active testing is so important, NetRounds provides both testing and assurance solutions that help service providers with two very important questions. First of all, they need to understand that the services they deliver works at time of delivery, so they make the customers happy. And then, of course, during the lifetime of the service, it's very important to ensure that any problems will be detected and corrected 
preferably before the customer notice. And that requires testing from an end user point of view. So by addressing these two questions, our strong belief is that will make service providers much more successful in winning out in the marketplace. So that leads us to the second poll for this session. So let's see if we can get the poll coming up here on your on your applications. On the, in the, on the lower right hand side you will see the question, what is your company's service assurance strategy in relation to automation and orchestration? You have four different options to choose from. Please fill that in and we will after that continue on with the presentation and explain how test and assurance relates to your existing fault management, performance management, and orchestration landscapes. So in the middle we have automation and orchestration. That is key uh, in, in the transitioning to, to modern networks. Fault management and PM performance measurement are still very important to understand where in the network you might have a problem. But the orange piece here will help you to, under, to perform activation tests. Once the service has been provisioned, it will help you to understand that the service produces uh, according to your SLAs. You can also test changes, of course. Now when software is being software uh, controlled and software con uh, defined, it's very important to test each change. And then, of course, monitoring from end customer's point of view in real time is something that really helps you being much more proactive, being ahead of the curve in, in detecting problems that might affect your end customers. And of course, the fourth bullet there, troubleshoot using automated test sequences. Uh, I have a background from Telia, Sonera myself, where I worked a lot with troubleshooting, and I spent a fair amount of just figuring out where in the network the problem is. So if that can be automated, uh, a great automation benefit can be achieved. So when we at NetTrans worked with Cisco and developed orchestrated assurance, we had three main, main basic principles that we worked towards. First of all, it had to be multi-layer and multi-domain. The solution should be addressing layer two to layer seven, and it should be possible to de deploy it anywhere in any domain from access, core, distribution, and even customer premises. It had to be programmable, of course, otherwise it's difficult to automate and it had to be software-based without requiring additional hardware in your network. So the orange piece here is a complement to your existing fault management and PM systems, and it's all driven by automation and orchestration as, as the center piece here. So when it comes to active test and assurance, we have divided it in three different dimensions here in, in this multidimensional cube. So going from layer two to layer seven in one, Access is where Netrans will help you understand the network performance related KPIs going from packet loss, one way delay, jitter, whether or not the QS uh, packet headers are intact and transparent, going all the way through TCP stateful throughput, all the way up to voice and video quality. That's where we, where we targeted the multi layer domain. In the location, Access. We, we go from, from end users all the way to data center when it comes to deployment. NetGround's active testing can be connected and been uh, applied in, in all of these different locations. And in the third dimension, we have the life cycle. So it's very important now to do proper activation testing, to do continuous monitoring of the service, as well as troubleshooting. And troubleshooting many times means isolating where the problem is. If you can easily isolate that the problem is in the access part of the network, you will save a lot of time when it comes to uh, pinpointing and solving the problem. So when it comes to what we at Netrans deliver, it's basically three things. The first thing addresses is the service working at time of delivery. We can test the service, we can produce birth certificates or service activation test reports, if you will. Fully automated, fully reproducible, and also stored in a central controller. For, for later retrieval if problems might surface. The middle part addresses the question, is the customer happy over the life cycle? We provide a new KPIs that are not available in classical assurance solutions that are much more oriented towards the infrastructure. We provide a real-time dashboard with second resolution so you can drill down into the relevant, to the KPIs that matters for your customers, not for your uh, infrastructure teams. 
The last piece is to resolve problems faster. If problems occur, and they might happen <laughs> in your domains, I suppose, so we can automate this troubleshooting activities. I will show you an example of how these kind of automation sequences can be built in NetRounds. So proceeding to the problems that we address, we are targeting three different domains, IT core and mobile backhaul. In the middle, we have dynamic and managed VPNs or business VPNs, and on the right-hand side, we have residential. So depending on where you deploy NetRounds, you will be able to solve various problems, of course. And this addresses the, the multi-domain capability that we have. So regardless of where you are focusing uh, access core, even distribution access or out to the customer, you will find use cases that, that will help you uh, pinpoint problems more easily. So let's have a look at problems that we have solved just recently. So we had an issue with, with a global business VPN provider that provided connectivity for its customer that had a global presence all around the world, South America, Europe, Asia, and North America. They had an issue with very low TCP throughput. They measured using simple UDP tools where they saw that the problem, that the, the performance that they got with UDP was, was fairly okay, but TCP really, really had a tough time to come up with, with, with expected performance. So the problem was that the network counters and indicators that they had, they were all looking good. So they couldn't find any indication that there should be a customer facing problem. And the customer, of course, was really dissatisfied even with this simple network service, just as being a TCP. So they applied NetRounds, and at the end of the day, they could um, fine tune TCP and make the customer happy. It turned out that there was a red random early detect uh, configuration in, in one of the routers that caused all this issue. Uh, Solving that problem, of course, made the customer happy, and now they are always using NetRounds to do proper turn-up testing when they de deploy new branch uh, VPN offices. Another example that we had recently also was uh, here in Europe, actually, a pan-European company that, that uh, had severe complaints regarding QS. It, it manifested in many different ways. Uh, going from applications responding slow to very poor network connectivity. Uh, and the problem was that when they, this customer of this telecom operator, they were deploying new branch offices in a very rapid pace. Hundreds of sites were being deployed in, in just a matter of, matters of weeks. And they didn't even know if, if the new branch offices worked at time of delivery. So they were basically blind. And the customer was super uh, unhappy, it resulted in escalation processes for this telecom operator, even risking uh, a churn customer. This was a very big customer of theirs, so so it, it was uh, a lot of a lot of stake, a lot of money at stake. So at the end, they deployed NetRounds. They found out that there was a this sir code point bleaching, so they, they used an incorrect mapping when they traversed uh, an off-net connection. So they they were able to spot the problem, solve it, and now they are also doing a proper activation testing. With, with a much more happy customer at the end of the day. So going into NetRounds, how it works, it's basically two components. You have the central control center, illustrated in the central part here. The control center provides two interfaces, one, one for automation and orchestration. We have a NetConf Gang API and we have a REST API as well. We will use the NetConf later today when NSO automates NetRounds. And we have a web UI, which network engineers and automation engineers build sequences or templates that can be automated. I will use that later in the demo. The second piece is the, the lower piece here, which is the orange boxes, which we call active test agents. Active test agents are multi-layer. They can send traffic from layer two to layer seven. They are even multi-tenant, so they can reside in multiple customer domains at the same time. And they can send traffic between each other, layer two to layer seven. They can also, in the left-hand side, they can interact with your existing network infrastructure using standardized protocols such as TWAMP and Y1731. TWAMP is two-way active measurement protocol. You can think of it as a ping on steroids, basically. You can measure one-way delay, you can measure one-way loss, and other very fine-grade KPIs. 1731 is the corresponding part, but for layer two Ethernet networks. Test agents can also interact with existing servers on the right-hand side. So you can request video content, SIP, ser SIP services, HTTP, and DNS, just to mention a few. So that's 
the uh, overall of what Netrans is all about, and we will shortly give a demo in, in how this works in uh, relation to, to NSO. So Stefan will continue from here, uh, and I will come back shortly with, with the demo. Okay, so before Matt goes on with the demo, I will give a little bit of a background, and some of you on the call here might have seen some of this material before, but I think it's worthwhile to, to step back and see why this is different than more traditional approaches and, and how there's a sort of a risk also with, with failing if you go the tra traditional assurance way. We keep coming back to, to four problems we see when we talk to service providers. And the, the first one is the disconnect between fulfillment and assurance. Usually it's like this, that the provisioning team, they deliver a service on Friday afternoon, they have a beer and go home. And then on Monday morning, the poor ops guys suddenly get crazy calls from customer complaining and the assurance system has no idea of that service, doesn't show that service state. And the assurance team needs to debug what, what the delivery guys really did. Did it work at delivery? If it did, they need to start with crazy things like service discovery to try to sort of understand the service itself. And that, that really needs to be fixed. They can't have that broken bridge between fulfillment and assurance. And that, that's what orchestrated assurance is all about. And, and a very important thing when closing that bridge is to introduce activation testing. So before having the beer on Friday afternoon, the delivery guys should have proper tests in place. So when you provision a service, with NSO, you don't stop with committing the configuration to the network, you also run a hardcore test. So I don't know where you on, on the call are today when you deliver services, how do you test the service before you have customers starting to pay for it? Do you do nothing, do you do a little bit of pinging, or do you do, do go the expensive way with hardware and field efforts? None of those are really optimal, and Max will show in the demo how you can do good activation tests without manual work. And the classical thing about the, the support tools you have in Assurance and Ops is that you have FM and PEM systems telling you faults and performance counters for your devices, but they tell very little about the individual services you have, what are the service KPIs for a specific user. Some of you maybe are trying a bit of uh, the magic mapping machine to, to try to get the service KPIs. Uh, there's a bit of hype currently that you can collect a lot of low-level noise, put the magic machine on top of that device-oriented input data, and calculate the service status. Um, that's, that's believing too much on, on, you might call it big data, you might call it machine learning. You are actually lacking relevant service KPIs as input. They cannot be inferred by the magic mapping machine. So. We are presenting a solution where you get end user experience KPIs directly as measurements and can feed that into, for example, big data projects. Because what you normally see when you work in operations is the sort of the broken alarm list. If you look to the alarm list to the left, you normally have a huge amount of alarms coming from fault management and performance monitoring systems. Question number one, which alarm should I take? Normally the severity levels doesn't really correspond to customer urgency, and there are too many alarms. Uh, but even more problematic is when you talk to customer care, many of the problems that customer care had to deal with have no corresponding alarm, and vice versa, you have alarms that doesn't really affect customers. So that means you're spending a lot of time on the wrong problems, and you don't have troubleshooting tools that will help you when you have customer care problems. So realizing that a service-centric monitoring solution will guide your priorities, you will work with the right things, and you will actively find the things before the customers do, that is almost impossible with, with fault management technologies. Uh, that is the background. We'll look at sort of how does this connect together in a process flow, and this is exactly what Matt's gonna show in the demo. So starting very high level, you have a fulfillment process where, where you activate the services. What's really important that you bridge into the fulfillment piece is two things. When you provision a service, after you have configured it, you should run an activation test. Does the service work? Second, 
you should automate the configuration of active SLA monitoring. So on Monday morning when the assurance team wakes up uh, in the operation center, they have an activation test report showing it did work and automatically they have a dashboard showing the service state. They should not have to sort of re-engineer the service, do service discovery. Those two items, brutally important, and remember those when, when Mats run the demo. If you do that, you can have a process, an assurance process that looks to the right here in the people on, in the picture. Um, imagine two different scenarios. Uh, you have active SLA monitoring, so every second you know for each service how happy the customer is. Take category number one. Most common problem actually, if you look at performance degradations in networks, is not a fault. The most common problem is that a network engineer reconfigured something in the network without knowing that will impact the service. So the fault management systems are all green. Maybe a performance monitoring system might show something fishy. But what we will show here that if you have this automatic SLA monitoring, that SLA monitoring can have NSO check the configuration in the network, can have NSO automatically fixing that configuration, and NSO automatically trigger an activation test and saying, yes, we're up and running again. So there you get a closed loop, detecting an SLA problem, fixing a configuration issue, testing the reconfiguration, all green again. Then the second scenario is where you actually have an underlying problem in the network. You might have too high utilization, might have something that, that breaks in the network. What we will show in the demo is that again, NSO will get an SLA violation. It will first study, is there a configuration issue? Have someone reconfigure the device? NSO will check that, retest the service. No, we still have the problem. NSO will then ask NetTrans to trigger an automatic troubleshooting sequence. So NetTrans will then dig deeply into the network, finding the underlying problem, finding where in the network the problem resides, give an, an, a, a troubleshooting report back to an engineer who will fix the problem, and then NSO will automatically run the test to make sure it runs and then we're back to green light. So these were two typical scenarios. Configuration issue detected real time by, by NetRounds, triggering NSO fixing the problem, Second is an underlying fault, and so we'll have a closed loop, first investigating if it was a config, then running troubleshooting tests, handing that output so that the problem can be fixed. Those things will now be demonstrated by Matt in a live demo. Let's see if I get the presenter ball. Here it comes. Thank you. I will share my... few applications. So what I will show you shortly here is uh, a drill down into what Stefan showed you earlier. So we'll now zoom in to the first phase, doing combined activation and enabling of the monitoring. So if you split this up now in, in the service design phase, this is something that we have already done when we, when we come to the demo. We have designed the service. It's a business VPN, an MPLS-based VPN. So we have the Yang models and the service logic already built in, in NSO. In NetRounds, we have a corresponding test and monitoring templates. So those have been designed by network engineers, domain experts that work closely with the service design engineers in, in the NSO side, which of course work closely with the pro product managers and, and, and understanding what we are delivering now to the customer. So when we are entering now the demo, what we will do, we will have NSO, first of all, configure the devices and also enable built-in operations and maintenance functions used for, for reflecting traffic, the TWAMP and Y7031 that I mentioned earlier. So typically now here in the service activation flow, many traditional solutions, they are considered done here, as Stefan explained. And uh, activation guys or fulfillment teams, they have to go home and, and keep their fingers crossed and hope that our operations team will take over and, and, and uh, wish for the best. We will not end there. What we will do, we will have NSO triggering a corresponding test template matching the service that was configured in this step. So NetRounds will execute the activation test and we will also have NSO turning on and enabling active monitoring 
So this is, we are now referring to templates, and I will show you how these templates are designed in NetGrounds. So let's now do this first step, at, at adding a branch office to an existing VPN. So let me, give me a second, I will share my browser window. Here we go. So for those of you who have seen uh, the NSO demo before, this is the uh, NSO graphical user interface running on top of, of the uh, configuration engine. Uh, so here we have a headquarters site being provisioned already. We have just an example Volvo VPN here. We have a headquarters site attached to the CE1 device uh, using a gold QS profile. This service model has three different QS policies defined, gold, silver, and bronze. We see here that an activation test has been done when the uh, headquarters site was configured. It was passed as well. I can click here. I can get all the details in the test report. I will do that shortly. The monitoring is also enabled, and we can see, it's hard to see now, 98.86. It's not 100%, uh, so obviously something is causing the SLA just to degrade slightly. So we see here now that the, the green circles around CE1 and PE1 means that the headquarter has been provisioned. What I will do now is that I will configure CE2 into the same VPN. I can now choose from the, the three QS policies that were configured in the service model. I will use the silver class. And this is very important now. See that activation test template and monitoring template refers to two simple strings, silver act, silver mon. I will show them later in, in Netrans Control Center because this is what NSO will refer to when it triggers the activation testing and monitoring. This is, of course, other input parameters populating the, the service model with IP addresses, bandwidths, and, and, and the, uh, interfaces, of course. So I will commit this change now. I've added the, the branch office site, clicking commit. Uh, and while that is now being provisioned to the network, I can mention now that you see test agent one, the orange box, and test agent two. These, the assumption here is that we have these two test agents already pre-provisioned in the network. They can run on any 8x6 computer out there. It could be physical or virtual running on a hypervisor. The specific implementation we can discuss separately, but this is uh, very straightforward to have them uh, pre-installed there or having them orchestrated as well using other orchestrators. So here we see now that we have green indicators on PE2, CE2, so the branch office is configured. We have, uh, typically now, the NSO would fire off an activation test. I will do that manually now for the demo purpose. We have a, a run button here. So when I click run, what NSO does is that it communicates to the Netrans controller over the NetConf Yang API, sending a reference to the Silver Act activation test um, template. So we can now see that it's running. I can click here and get redirected. I have the tab already open here. So what we see here now is the dashboard. So I will just refresh the dashboard. It was a while since I was here, just to make sure that we, we see all, all the, the stuff. So what we see, we had the headquarters site. Remember that it was already up and running and monitoring. This is now reflecting real time how the headquarter behaves. This is local time, Pacific, 8.26 a.m. Here we see some previously executed activation tests, and we see also that this one popped up. This is activation test branch, the silver, uh, the silver QS profile. I will click on that one. We can now see in real time how NetRounds is executing a sequence of predefined steps. So what the first step, it, it checks reachability. Sending traffic from the headquarters site down to the CE2 device. So actually this guy sends reflecting traffic to, it's an IPSLA running on, you can see here a CSR 1KV. Traffic bouncing back here, and then it's sending traffic also to the other test agent to test agent. So it's a combination. So we can actually do quite sophisticated tests even without the test agent out on the branch office. So that depends on the, the conditions. So we can now see the three steps have been executed all past test, uh, we had two traffic classes, best effort and business. You can double click here if I, to see the, the specifics of all the details now with the KPIs, the loss in the two different directions, 0% loss, very good in business. I can see best effort. I would suppose to have some loss there. Yeah, we see it performing much worse. 
almost 1% in each direction, higher delay as well. But all in all, this is now within acceptable limits. So we can now have a test report that could be retrieved over the API as well. From the ordering system, for instance, you can automatically have this report. You can check show graphs here. So I have a dynamic report built on demand. I have all the steps, three steps, all past time. I will have all the, the nitty gritty details with all the charts. So this is very good documentation to avoid later blame game discussions. So going back now to the dashboard, we have had now the activation testing successfully performed. We can also see that now. Branch office passed. And I have a URL I can directly click here and get the same things that I've done. So what I will do now, I will enable monitoring. Keep in mind now that this would be built into the service logic, both activation testing and monitoring. But I'm, I'm now single stepping this one to make the, the uh, demo flow a little bit more controlled. But of course, it could be fully automated with very, very little effort. So we can now go back to the, you can actually click there again. I will go, come to the dashboard, but I will, I will actually click here to see now Volvo branch has appeared on the dashboard in NetRounds. It's gray. And the reason it's gray is because it, this one looks backwards in time. And we didn't have the branch office configured until just now. So we, I would anticipate to see results coming in from the right hand side. Here we see the first results coming in. I can actually click here to get the exact details of what's going on now. So here we see best effort, business class, and TYM traffic coming in, populating from the right. Everything looking good, green, green, green. So that all these uh, active streams that are being sent are uh, below or within the accepted thresholds. So the activation test sequence that I showed was fairly simple, the first one. You remember only three steps. So let's have a look at a more comprehensive one. This is the one that I did earlier. So when I did the gold branch, uh, sorry, let's click there, gold branch. Here we go. Uh, so here you will see a much more comprehensive test sequence, starting with TWAMP again, checking whether or not traffic is, is forwarded correctly. If there is a firewall misconfiguration, you will see perhaps SSH traffic or, or NTP traffic being blocked, multicast. So I can actually click through the, all these, checking DNS, so this again does not only send traffic test agent to test agent, but was also validating the response time to various services that you have in your network. UDP, this is important, diff serve code point remapping, remember the use case that we had recently. So here you could easily find if there is an issue. This is now a gold class. So I would expect three different classes in addition to the default. Here I can find a short forwarding. This is for business class traffic and here I find um, expedited forwarding that's also passed. So we are sweeping traffic from test agent to test agent, spanning through all the diffs or code points, making sure that your policy map is actually what you are expecting so you don't get uh, unhappy surprises. So as you can see, a lot of steps here. So this is now built in a template. So let's have a look at how this template actually is built. Again, now yes, switch now to the designer environment, not the result view. Here I can see, actually made some tweaks. So here we have the three different TWAMP classes. I could easily add two or three more depending on the number of classes that you might have. I could add, um, let's say I have other services running in my network. I might have IPTV, I can combine and build now in, in a graphical way. I might start with the services rather than TWAMP for various reasons. So this is a template that will be built by domain experts, network engineers, working closely with product managers, knowing what have you sold to your customers, which KPIs are important to, to monitor and measure from end users' point of view. So I could, for instance, add a new step here after the last HTTP. I can click Add Step. Here I have the full range of available tools that test agents have built in. So for instance, TCP UDP performance, I can go from basic UDP, TCP, either point to point, uh, fully meshed or, or hub and spoke topologies. I can send multicast UDP to validate that multicast is, is properly treated in the network. I can run multi-session TCP to look for if stateful devices are behaving correctly. IETF as a standard for TCP throughput testing called RFC 6349, very useful and very good to spot problems like the one I explained earlier where we had an issue with, 
with, uh, with random early detect misconfigurations. QS policy profiling. If you have a random, uh, if you have a, uh, weighted fire queuing misconfiguration, you can easily find that. So going from layer two, layer three, all the way up to Metro Ethernet forum kind of testing, transparency testing, and even this one I told, 17031 CWAMP for reflection-based testing. So I will speed up just to show you now, going back to the, to the dashboard again. Let's see here, I'm leaving this one. I think I have the dashboard here. So what I will do now is that I will enable, uh, let's see, I'm going back here. I will actually add some impairment. This is just a script that I have that will add packet loss. Okay, sorry, I'm not share, sharing my, hold on. Uh, here we go. So I'm actually just adding some, some loss here. Let me see, give me a few seconds. I will do some things in parallel here to speed up. Enable monitoring again, and then I will switch over to my PowerPoint just to show you. So this is what we are doing now. So we are adding a network impairment that strikes only in one of the ways, which is a problem that, that's tricky to find and it only affects best effort, which could be the reason for a congested network. So traffic from test agent one to test agent two will drop 10% 10 10 of the packets. The reverse direction works fine, which means that when test agent one sends reflecting traffic here, it will be only affected in, in one way, one of the ways, but not the other. So let's now see what happens in, uh, in the dashboard here. So going back, hold on. I have so many tabs open. Here we are, dashboard, sorry. So we see now that, um, that the Volvo branch is open. I actually didn't enable the, the monitoring as, as expected. So what we will do now is that we will initiate a troubleshooting sequence. So trigger troubleshooting. This is also something that would be, of course, fully automated when NSO detects, uh, uh, sorry, when Netrans detects an SLA violation, it will inform an NSO or NSO can even use technologies like kickers to, to monitor um, if, if state changes occur. So what happens now is that NSO stops the monitor that was running, that's good before initiating troubleshooting. The first thing it checks is, are there any devices out of sync right now? Because that's the, the first easy win. Because if, as Stefan mentioned, a lot of times network engineers out in the field might have reconfigured the network. So this will do a first attempt to just push the right configuration. But obviously there was no, I just added a network impairment. <laughs> so that will, NSO will not see that. So what it does, it will start an activation test again to see, let's see now, go back to what we did at time of delivery. Can we do a proper activation testing? So we can now see uh, an activation test, actually two of them running, I think I, I initiated two of them, let's see. So what we will see here now is that there will be severe loss, of course, uh, things will, will go, go out of hand, uh, activation test will fail, and what happens after that is that, that there will be an, uh, let's see, let this one finish. Going back here, let's see. I think for some reason I, I triggered this twice. <laughs> so that it, it complains, it ran, it, it ran two, two executions of the same activation test concurrently. So it failed for, for, for obvious reasons. So I think if you go back to, the, to this one, so the activation test failed. What happens now is that NSO has, we have built a service logic for this obviously. So if activation test fails, let's do a troubleshooting test. I will show you how that works. There is a difference between activation test and troubleshooting test. If you think of activation tests sending traffic endpoint to endpoint, a troubleshooting test could invoke other test agents or using reflectors between to, in order to isolate and sectionalize where the problem is. And that is what we are doing now in the troubleshooting test. So let's see here. For some reason it starts two, of, uh, two, two troubleshooting tests at the same time. So what it does here, first of all it checks data throughput Obviously, we have added loss now uh, in, in the middle, so we can't get the expected throughput. And here you can see clearly now, there is an issue with best effort. So I'm sending traffic from headquarter location to CE2 in both best effort and business. I'm sending from branch office to CE2. And here we can see that there is 
clearly everything looks good except from headquarter to CE2 and in one of the directions. So we can easily now drill down, oh sorry, we can easily drill down to see here loss far, loss near. Here you can spot the 10% loss going now from an overall alarm received by an SO, firing off a troubleshooting sequence, being able to pinpoint the exact location and direction even in the network. This is very, very useful and this could would be automatically triggered. So when the network engineers get called in, he will have all this information at his table. So it will, you can imagine that this saves a lot of time rather than having to go through all these manual steps in, in the troubleshooting process. So this really, really closes the loop in, in terms of, of, of uh, automated healing and, and troubleshooting. So I think that, that ends my part of the demonstration. We would be more than happy to schedule one-on-one -on -one sessions if you're interested to, to learn more of how NSO and, and Netrans plays together. So we'll hand over to, to Stefan now to wrap up with the summary part. There is first the, the third poll, yeah. poll also, yeah. So before going into the summary thing, we have a poll here. So what Matt showed you, what you can do with active testing and monitoring, and we should emphasize active here, meaning that you can run activation tests and that we're sending active traffic to give you service KPIs and service SLAs. What benefit of automated active testing and monitoring will most benefit your organization? And you have the four possible answers there. So we we'll try to summarize this a bit. And what go, also goes back to Song's introduction is, is the matter of speed. And whereas today you need to develop services, you need to deploy them quickly, you need to be able to change them. And this, this kind of figure, you've probably seen it so that you're, you're so bored with it, but it, there's a lot of information to get out of the loop we see here. What did we show here when it comes to developing services and operating services? What did we show? It's very important to take the complete life cycle thing into consideration here. So when you, when you plan your services, you should, of course, design your services, but you should add a new thing. How do I test my services? If you, if you do software design, you very early on think about how to test the software. We are lacking that piece a little bit in networking. So plan for how you should test your services and what Mats did show you, you can build concrete test templates in Netrans. You can use that as a prototyping environment build case, test cases, run them in your network. When you then define your services and then implement them in NSO, you, you do your NSO thing about Yang models, but what you do then finally in Netrans is to create for every service, what is the template to test the service, what is the template to monitor the service. That should also be part of the create space. Before making the services available in your catalog for customers to buy, you should, in your lab environment, in your lab networks, you should execute the tests because the activation tests can be used to validate your design as well, not just validate the, the service instances you provision at runtime. And when you package the thing before making it operational, of course, you do your NSO packages, but what you also do is that you publish your NetRounds template. So when you work in the NetRounds design environment, you can first work with your own local templates when they're, when they're validated, you publish them to the operational environment. So going back to the Matt's demo again, when you provision the service instances in NSO, you need to do another thing. You need to run activation tests as well. That should be automatically triggered by NSO. And another thing, NSO should also configure the active SLA monitoring as we did see here. And the, the last part of Matt's demo, if you have, have ongoing service monitoring, NetRounds will send SLA violations back to NSO. NSO will trigger healing. So healing meaning, was there a configuration issue? If so, I can reprovision the service to the network again. I can retest it. If that didn't solve the problem, I can troubleshoot. So the last part of Matt's demo, 
where we did run a very deep dive into the network, we could at the end really give the network engineer, this is the location in the network. We see that it's not a, a cross policy problem. It's actually a, a, a throughput problem in exact this location. So a lot of things automated, no hands operation for doing anything of this. So this is sort of how you should view your services, putting assurance into the picture. So hand over to Song. Yes. Thank you, Stefan. Well, as part of wrapping up, I just want to reiterate here that uh, with Cisco's automation, right, NSO, is provides the agility and full automation in deploying probably most of the tier one service providers, providing industry's broadest multi-vendor support and the most scalable service orchestration. Also to emphasize, it's not only for physical devices, but also provides the uh, NSO provides the SV mono compliant, NFV orchestration and VNF manager capability with Cisco Elastic Services Controller, ESC. NSO automation is relevant in today's and tomorrow's networks. For more information uh, on today's uh, presentation, and content, you can visit the following sites, cisco.com, go NSO, or orchestratedassurance.net. Contact your Cisco and then rouse account representative for more information, demos, and any follow-up conversation. And I think uh, we're coming up to the top of the hour, but if there are any questions, please, uh, you know, Feel free to yeah, I think we have one, one quick one here, Song, that uh, just came up that uh, maybe we can you know, get answered. Uh, this, this looks like it might be a good one here for, uh, for Stefan and Matt. Uh, question is, apart from supporting activation testing, can NetRounds also automate service pre and post checks? For example, using show commands on the devices to check that retrieved device operational or status information is as expected before or after a change is applied. Okay, so I would say yes to the first part, but no to, to the how. So NetTrans doesn't do show commands towards the devices. We, we, we work at the data plane, not at the management plane. And, and I think that's brutally important to, to understand. So if you would like to do a bit of show commands from the devices, you should do that from NSO. NSO is, is good on that. So, and that's quite common, NSO customers, they, they do show commands to check, check operational data as part of all the provisioning logic. That, that's talking to the management plane. What you should do as, as pre and post checks using NetRans is to do data plane validation. So everything we do is at the data plane, not at the management plane. Okay, thanks. And maybe just one more quick wrap up question here. I'll, I'll pass this one back to, to Song. Uh, question is, uh, can I buy Cisco NSO and NetRounds as a joint solution, uh, or, or do I need to buy separately? Where can I get, uh, where do I go to uh, actually do this? Well, if you, I mean, Cisco sales team, your account team, and if it's internal to Cisco, we have a specialist that can help the account team quote the products. NetRounds solutions and Cisco NSO are both on Cisco price list, right? Um, it, you just have to assemble a bill material, bill off materials consisting of the functionality you want to license. So uh, could be purchased through Cisco, as we mentioned earlier in the meeting, in the webinar. Great. I think that covers off question. We're sort of at the top of the hour, so uh, we'll wrap up. Uh, I just uh, one more one more reminder. Uh, if you happen to be uh, planning to attend Cisco Live uh, Latin America in Cancun, Mexico next week, uh, we'd uh, like to invite you to stop by our booth in the World of Solutions area where we'll be featuring demos of both NSO and Orchestrated Assurance there. So uh, with that, uh, I'd like to thank our, our speakers, uh, Matt, uh, Stefan, and Song, and uh, also the audience for, for hanging in there and listening with us. And uh, Katie, I'll give it back to you to wrap up. Thanks, John, and yes, thanks to all our attendees for joining today. As a reminder, a short survey is gonna pop up when you close your browser. We appreciate your feedback and hope that you all have a great rest of your day.